look, I think, Rick, there are a lot of people out there who will argue vociferously that calorie for calorie, they're all the same. It doesn't matter if you're eating a calorie of glucose, a calorie of fructose, a calorie of fatty acid. If, if you can regulate the intake, <clears throat> it, it's, it's, it's all the same. So, so when you look at what you just said, which is fructose ingestion can lead to weight gain through two mechanisms. One, it can drive you to eat more. <clears throat> so on the intake side of the ledger, it's causing you to eat more, but it can also lower your energy expenditure. And I assume that could be both deliberate and non-deliberate, right? It could reduce, if that's true, re resting energy expenditure, and it could presumably even reduce uh, drive, energetic drive, which would be spontaneous energy expenditure. What's the contribution of these? No, so actually that is still the first mechanism. The first mechanism is it makes you gain weight by increasing energy intake and dropping energy metabolism. And, and so what happens is a lot of weight gain from sugar is because you are eating more and exercising less or, or moving having less. less rest. Yeah, moving less, less resting energy metabolism. So can, that's Can you the quantify first... those two? I, I want to get yes, a sense I, of, I, I, yeah, I, I, how much yes. is the increase in, how much is the increase in intake? So, so the way, the way you would do this, I think in animals would be because you're pair feeding them, uh, or be, sorry, because you're letting them eat ad libitum. In this case, you'd have to let them eat ad lib. You could quantify the difference in energy intake. And you could say, does that difference explain the weight gain fully? If it does, then none of it has to do with the decline of energy expenditure. If it doesn't, you would see what the gap is, right? Right. Let me ex explain that. Very good question. So most f weight gain from f sugar is due to eating more. Okay. And some weight gain is due to a decrease in energy metabolism. And, uh, and if you do isocaloric diet, so all the animals, you know, the controls and the sugar fed animals are eating the exact same amount, weight gain is hard to, sh there's, there's ba basically minimal difference in weight gain in the short term. Like uh, if you go for s two months, or sh and, and so if you give sugar versus starch after two months uh, in, in, in animals, there's very little difference in weight gain. There's a little bit of weight gain because of the decreased energy metabolism in the fructose group, but it can be hard to show. And the high fructose corn syrup industry loves this. So they say, hey, um, you, 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 the problem is people are eating too much but if you control for how much sugar you're eating, um, it, there, it, and we do isochloric studies and we look at short-term studies, there's no difference in weight gain. And they publish this like in the Annals of Internal Medicine and they say sugar's safe, but they miss the point that the sugar is actually causing hunger and by, by forcing an isochloric diet, the people are hungry but they're not able to eat because they're not allowed to eat. And so if you do a short-term study, like several weeks to months, you can't show a difference in weight gain. If you went longer, like a year, you probably would show a difference in weight gain because of the difference in energy metabolism. Yeah, just to put some numbers to that, right? If, if feeding somebody a, a high fructose isocaloric diet compared to a high glucose diet, it if the high fructose group was driven to eat an extra 300 calories per day while simultaneously experiencing a reduction of energy expenditure of 25 calories per day, the increase in the drive to eat 300 calories a day would be readily apparent. Again, this is very back of the envelope math. No, and, no, you're totally right. But, but and, 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 and this is overly sim simplifying things because it, it, it doesn't work out to be quite this straightforward a math. But by the numbers I gave, every 12 days, you could gain a pound on the right. intake side, but it would take months to show a gain of a pound on the energy expenditure side. 
you're you're absolutely right. And the other problem is like in the industry, they'll compare fructose to glucose, but we know that glucose, some of the glucose is being converted to fructose. So it's really uh, not a fair comparison, right? That's right. So, so the, but there's another major mechanism. And the other major mechanism is that you, even if you pair feed animals so that they're eating the exact same amount, Yes, there may not be a difference in weight gain because they're all eating the exact same number of calories. And even though these guys are leptin resistant, they can't eat what they want to eat. So presumably they're less happy. <laughs> yes, they're less happy. They're hungry. They're like feeling they're on a diet, right? Um, and uh, But even when you control the exact same diet, all the other metabolic effects of fructose are still going on. They're still becoming insulin resistant. They're still getting fatty liver. They're still getting hypertension. And, and you can see this um, beautifully, uh, you know, in animals, it's very easy, but you can actually, um, I've seen clinical evidence of this in people too. And, and um, a, a great example, and I may have told this story last time when we were on, but uh, we, we were doing a pair feeding study of 40% sugar versus starch. And so the animals were getting the exact same amount of food. And pair feeding means you take a group of animals. Let's say you have 10 animals in this group and 10 animals in this group. And they all get, um, they all get the same, they, they have to eat the same amount of food each day. And what that means is that the animal that eats the least amount of food all the other animals have to eat that least amount of food. So if you have one guy who's not, who's got a problem and isn't eating a lot, all the animals are forced to do that. So we were doing this study, Carlos uh, Roncalo and our group was doing the study uh, to, to look at pear feeding. And he did not know that one of the animals had cancer and that animal was eating hardly anything. So we had a, a, an experiment that went for four months in which all the animals are eating like hardly anything. They're all eating the exact same food. They are on a severe diet, but one group was on a 40% sugar diet and the other was on a, a starch diet and every, everything was equal. They're eating the exact same amount. At the end of the four months, the sugar fed animals tended to be more, tended to be a higher weight, but it wasn't significant, but it was from that resting metabolism uh, that from the fact that they had a lower energy metabolism. And it looked like it would have been significant. We'd gone a little bit longer. How long did you go? Uh, four months, I believe. It might've been, yeah, four months. Okay, so it, just to put that in perspective and give a sense of magnitude, four months in mice is about 10% of their life. It's, it's more, yeah. it's about 15% of their life. So that's it. Yeah, they, they live two and a half years. Okay. So, yeah. 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 So, so that's like 15 years in a human. Yeah. Okay. So that, that, that would suggest by the way, that at least in a calorie controlled state, excess fructose does not alter energy expenditure in, in any clinically relevant manner. If, well, I mean, if, 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 after, if, it, if after 15 years, which is effectively what that was in humans, if after 15 years, there was no difference in weight between the groups, despite one mainlining fructose and one not, you would say, at least in the context of low calorie intake, which is what they were, they didn't, energy expenditure is not a driver of adiposity. I, I think over decades it is. I don't know, know. that's one and a half uh, and decades. A half, that's one and a half <laughs> decades, that's a long yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, maybe half, uh, you know, uh, maybe as much as a half a pound a year to a, you know, I would say could be from this half pound to a pound, perhaps. It just depends on the individual. But you're right. It probably by its, you know, we can't completely separate it from the increased food intake that accompanies this in, in people because we're not pair feeding. But you might be right. Um, so what were the other differences anyway, between? What, what but, but was the, different? But the other thing that happened is these animals that got sugar, every one of them became diabetic. Every one of them had severe fatty liver. I mean, it was a very dramatic difference from the starch-fed animals. So what we and um, and and they had uh, islet their the islets of the pancreas were showing changes of type two diabetes as well. Uh, and and so I think 
um, that, you know, that what we've shown, and we've shown it multiple times, is that there are many, many effects that are independent of calories from fructose, and it's due to this energy depletion pathway. But one of, this, one of the consequences of this energy depletion is that it stimulates food intake. And, and, and so part of obesity really is eating more and exercising or uh, moving less. I mean, that really is true. It's just that it's not so much behavioral driven. It's not your fault. It's you are activating biologic pathways in your body. You're, you're, it's a biology. Um, and, and, you know, certainly advertisement, you know, encourages you to go to movies and to, to be more sedentary. There's lots of things that are pushing that and people are serving bigger plates of food, but maybe they're serving bigger plates of food because they know that you're going to leave hungry if you don't have that extra food because you are becoming leptin resistant and you're eating more uh, as part of this uh, problem. Thank you.